All right, welcome again, guys, to another G Squared Academy video where you know excellence is, of course, epitomized. And you know we simplify things for you. Um, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, for sharing the videos, for liking them, for watching them, for every comment you have made. If there is um, a video or a concept that you want me to go through, leave a comment. All right, so we, we always look at comments and we try to improve and make things simple for you so you can be successful in whatever it is that you're doing. All right, so thank you guys. Now, we're continuing today in our, um, in our electrolyte series, um, or sorry, not electrolyte series, our PD series rather, um, looking at actual planning and designing labs. Today, we're gonna be looking at a physics lab, electrolyte conductance PD. Okay, so let us just dive right into it. So your problem statement, Don is an athlete. He normally drinks Cliff Aid, $10 for that, and as his electrolyte during, um, during, during matches. However, his friends told him about another two drinks, which they claim provide more energy and they're cheaper. The drinks are Hunter Aid, $7, and School Aid, $5. So your job now is to plan and design an experiment to help John to decide which drink to take. And of course, you're gonna to want to choose the drink which has the highest amount of electrolyte and hopefully on the cheaper side. So we'll see. Okay, so that's your problem statement. What's your hypothesis? What's the hypothesis now? Okay, so I'm just choosing one. Contourate contains the highest concentration of electrolytes. Remember, as usual, you just need to state aside, take a side, and then it needs to be tested, but we can test this. Okay, so that's two marks already so far. Then, of course, you have your standard headings. Your um, G Squared Academy, this is lab number three, um, October 11, 2021, this skill is PD. The topic is, and of course, this could be a number of topics, electrolysis, circuits, conductance, and if you find anything else which is suitable, um, topic for this problem statement, that's fine as well. Our aim, to investigate the conductance of three electrolytes, all right? So pressing on, what are the things we need? As already you see, we need a measuring cylinder, we need the electrolytes, of course, we need beaker, we need micro voltmeter, micro ammeter, connecting wire, power source, graphite electrodes. Those are the things that we need um, for this. Right, so these are all the things that you need. Now let's look at our method. What are the steps that we're gonna be taking here? All right, um, so our method, gather all the apparatus and materials, set up the apparatus as shown using 15 mils of Hunter Aid as the electrolyte. Then you're gonna record the voltage and the current and you're gonna record the results. Then you will repeat all of those steps using Clift Aid and School Aid. All right, so now look at our apparatus setup. So you have a power source, right? You have your connecting wire with your ammeter there in series, and you have your electrode. This is also an electrode over here on this side now. You still have your connecting wire. You have a bulb or a resistor, right? Um, with your voltmeter going across that. Remember, you measure the voltage across a resistor. So volt, um, voltmeters are not in series. Okay, you're connecting wires, as I said before, your beaker and your electrolyte. All right, so this is basically how the apparatus would be set up um, for this experiment. Pressing on. So what are the variables for this experiment? What are the things which affect our results? And of course, you know, there are a number of variables. The first one is you're manipulated. What are we changing? We are changing the electrolyte we use here. Then your responding variable, having changed the electrolyte, what is affected? The conductance is what will be affected by that. Somebody might say, sir, wouldn't the voltage be affected? Possibly. Wouldn't the current be affected? Possibly. Um, so could we use those? Yes, we could use those. But ultimately, the goal is to get the conductance. So we are looking at the final goal. Then what must we keep constant? We must keep the amount of electrolyte use constant. The voltmeter use, you can't be jumping from one voltmeter to another voltmeter or an ammeter or the bulb that you're using in the series needs to be the same bulb. You have to keep everything the same or try to keep everything the same except the 
electrolyte that you are using. Okay, now what do we expect to happen? Of course, we need to look back at our hypothesis. Our hypothesis states Hunterade contains the highest concentration of electrolytes. Therefore, if you, your hypothesis says Hunterade contains the highest concentration of electrolytes, your expected results need to match that as well. So it is expected that Hunterade will have the highest conductance since you're saying high concentration of electrolytes is equal to high conductance, okay? Um, so that's your expected results. Here now you have your data to be collected. And as usual, your data to be collected is always good to use a table. Tables are just awesome, okay? Um, so here you have your electrolyte. Your three electrolytes are there. The current, which you would get from the experiment, the voltage, the resistance, which you're gonna calculate, and the conductivity. Okay, so this is just how you would record the, um, the data that you're going to be getting. Then now the treatment of results. After you have gotten your data from the experiment, what do you do with it? I would say that you should do sample calculations for your resistance and your conductance. Right? So you would calculate the resistance using the equation resistance is equal to voltage over current. Right, And when you do a sample calculation for that, you just calculate the others and put the values in the data table, which I just showed you a while ago. You would also calculate the, um, the conductance um, using the equation G is equal to one over resistance. And G of course is for the symbol for conductance, right? So you'd calculate the resistance and then you calculate the conductance. And the values, you do a sample calculation of course, and you put those values in the table that you get, all right? So pressing on now, your limitations slash sources of error. What are those things you cannot control, but they will affect your experiment? Number one, instrumental error. You may have a calibration issue with your machine, right? Or you may have electrical issues that you know nothing about. You could have an electrical issue that you don't know anything about, but it seems to be working fine, but yet still it might be giving errors um, from time to time, but you don't know. So those things. The concentration of electrolyte in each 15 mil. What do we might, what I mean by this? You have measured 15 mils of electrolyte, right? You are going to be thinking now, okay, the, the 15 mil represents the entire sample of electrolyte. Okay, that's basically what this is saying, that the 15 mil represents the sample of electrolyte, all right? And you're going to think that it's the same for all of them. A third one, know that there are no non-electrolyte compounds. CPD for me means compounds, right? CPDS means compounds, um, which may conduct electricity. So what you're basically saying here is that in the electrolytes, in your drinks, there could be other substances which are not electrolytes. That might sound a bit strange. That would... Um, electrolytes that you need for energy purposes really or for yeah in this case to transmit electrical impulses right that may conduct electricity all right so you're thinking now okay hold on maybe there are things in here that do not help in the conductance of um electrical impulses in the body which would help me right but they conduct electricity as well so the there may be those things that would affect your experiment okay then so of course, remember you only need one limitation. Precautions, things, steps you take to secure your experiment, make sure, making sure that it's fair and to protect yourself. Um, so you rinse the beak after each experiment. You use the same amount of electrolytes and wear rubber gloves and shoes for obvious reasons. You're using electrical stuff, anything can happen, right? So you need to protect yourself there, okay. Finally, your assumptions, your assumptions. What are the things that you assume to be a certain way, but they may not be that way, but you assume that they are, okay? You only need one, so here's number one, only electrolytes um, in the drinks conduct. So you're assuming that only the electrolytes, the things that would help with the transmission of electrical impulses within the body um, would conduct electricity and would conduct Okay, you're assuming that the 15 mils is also representative of the whole drink sample. Okay, um, the ammeter and voltmeter have no intrinsic issues, no calibration issues, no electrical issues, nothing of that nature um, affecting the 
instruments. Okay, and of course you only need one assumption. So therefore you can choose from any um, one of those things. So I am hoping again that this video you have found helpful guys um, in your endeavors, in your academic studies. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, um, hit the post notification bell so that as soon as I post a video, you can get access to it and you know that it's out there. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you find this helpful and I will see you next time at G-Square Academy where excellence is, as usual, epitomized.